Hello and thank you for joining this Onc Live TV Peer Exchange. This program features expert panel discussions with a focus on current and emerging therapies for the treatment of breast cancer, specifically HER2 positive and HR positive HER2 negative breast cancer. My name is Dr. Adam Brofsky and I am a professor of medicine at the University of Pittsburgh and medical director of the Women Cancer Center at McGee Women's Hospital at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center and University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute. Participating today are, on our distinguished panel uh, are a group of uh, both expert clinical trialists as well as expert clinicians. Uh, there's Kimberly Blackwell, professor of medicine and assistant professor in radiation oncology at the Duke Cancer Institute in Durham, North Carolina. Joyce O'Shaughnessy, chair of the Breast Cancer Research Program of U.S. Oncology and a medical oncologist at Texas Oncology and at the Baylor Charles A. Sammons Cancer Center in Houston. Mark Pegram, Professor of Medicine and Oncology at Stanford University Medical Center, and who is the Susie Huan Huey Hung, Professor and Associate Director of Clinical Research at the Stanford Cancer Institute, and Director of the Breast Cancer Program of the Stanford Cancer Institute. Hope Rugo, who is a Professor of Medicine and Director of the Breast Oncology Clinical Trials and Education Program at the University of California, San Francisco Comprehensive Cancer Center. Finally, there's Denise Yardley, Senior Investigator, Breast Cancer Research at the Sarah Cannon Cancer Research Institute and Tennessee Oncology in Nashville. Let's begin this discussion with an overview of the current treatment options in HER2-positive breast cancer. We will then look at a case study to illustrate a few key points. In neoadjuvant therapy, pertuzumab, a HER2 new receptor antagonist, is indicated in combination with trastuzumab and docetaxel for neoadjuvant treatment of HER2-positive locally advanced inflammatory or early stage breast cancer. It is also indicated in the same combination for treatment of HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. The accelerated approval for neoadjuvant therapy was based on a study designed to measure pathologic complete response rate. This study included 417 women randomly assigned to receive one of three treatment regimens, trastuzumab and docetaxel, pertuzumab, trastuzumab, and docetaxel, pertuzumab, trastuzumab, or pertuzumab and docetaxel. About 39% of the women in the triple therapy arm achieved a pathologic complete response rate, compared with 21% of women who received trastuzumab and docetaxel. So now let's turn to our therapy, our panel, uh, and ask which women do you think are the right patient population for neoadjuvant therapy in HER2-positive breast cancer? And we'll start with Denise. I think that's a great question and it's become an evolving uh, group of patients now to treat. I think we used to have definitions that we felt really applied for the locally advanced neoadjuvant treatments and now with this exciting development of increasing HER2 targeted therapies, dual HER2 targeted therapies, I know in my own practice I've actually lowered the bar of what I would have traditionally considered a patient who was locally advanced with a large tumor um, involvement of the skin or bulky axillary nodes, now to almost tumors that I think are eligible for adjuvant therapy. And so, you know, from my own practice, I think tumors any that have any degree of evidence of nodal involvement or tumors, if we look at size, we have some T1 tumors that are applicable for neoadjuvant strategies. Any other comments on Joyce? Yes, I think the uh, label says either node positive or uh, T2. T2. So um, it's a little tricky because is that T2 clinically or is that T2 on the MRI? And so I think the onus, what I've been doing in my practice is trying to get people on it because you know that PAF-CR rate is so important, particularly in the ER negative where we know it does translate into benefit. And, you know, it's the kind of thing where I've, I've mentioned it to the surgeons and everything, but the other day, for example, a patient came in, she'd already had her surgery, and she had an ER negative, PR negative, HER2 positive patient, you know, cancer. And um, unfortunately, I can't give her pertuzumab in the adjuvant setting at this time. So I got to go back and revisit that with the surgeons, because I really think if they meet the label T2, N0, or node positive, clinically by however you get there, I think they really should get the uh, pertuzumab preoperatively. Kim, what do you think? Go ahead. I mean, I think that's a, that's a really important point because I think that uh, because we tend to see the patients after the surgeons, there may be certain patients who actually don't have markers done before they have their primary surgery. So this is an educational process of working together with the surgeons and with our community colleagues 
I've been recently getting a number of emails about uh, patients who fit right into this category about how we treat the patients, what to do with them after surgery, for example, where you continue trastuzumab but you stop pertuzumab. And the benefit from adding pertuzumab seemed to be across both ER positive and ER negative, although less so in ER positive. So I've really considered it for both groups of patients. We enroll most of our patients in the neoadjuvant setting on clinical trials, but I think that you could actually make the case for treating somebody in the neoadjuvant setting even with a slightly smaller tumor that was ER negative because you can't give them the same therapy postoperatively. And I think one of the questions that comes up with our patients is, well, wait a minute, if I'm having such a good response, do I need that anthracycline? And one of the questions is how we answer that if we've given them pertuzumab, trastuzumab, and ataxane without the carboplatin, which was part of the uh, the other trial that was used as part of the um, the approval, the accelerated approval. And I don't know what everybody's doing in that situation. Mark, any comments? Well, at our institution, I would say that we're considering pertuzumab as neoadjuvant therapy for anybody who would be a candidate for standard adjuvant HER2 targeted therapy, uh, irrespective of the cutoffs in the label in terms of size, for example. Um, the other opportunity this affords patients using more, even more liberal criteria than what we've discussed so far is the potential to participate in the ongoing NSABP B50 trial, which is a post-neoadjuvant randomized trial comparing one year of adjuvant trastuzumab in standard fashion versus uh, switching for TDM1 in the uh, post-neoadjuvant setting in that trial. So patients who fail to achieve a PATH-CR with neoadjuvant uh, now label approved pertuzumab regimens, they would be eligible potentially for NSABP B50. So we've shifted in our practice at Stanford to strong consideration for pertuzumab-based uh, chemo up front for most any early stage breast cancer that would be a candidate for standard adjuvant HER2 targeted therapy. Jim, what about you? Yeah, and I think implied in everyone's comments, it's not just about educating the surgeon, but we've had to go back and also have a discussion with our pathologists that HER2 information, even in the smallest or smaller tumors, really helps guide decision making about who we would really push to get on neoadjuvant therapy independent of tumor size. That, and having that HER2 status you know, very early on, I think, really facilitates um, good decision-making as to why we would want to treat someone in the neoadjuvant setting with pertuzumab.